Jurisdiction is typically defined as the legal authority given by the law to a court to try certain kinds of cases and rule on legal matters within particular geographic areas. Up until recently in human history, this geographic area was limited, so it was easier to regulate most businesses. With the introduction of the internet, even small businesses have access to customers who might live in vastly different geographic locations, and thus live inside of different legal jurisdictions. We already had international trade and regulations for cross-border relationships. However, most of our laws were created before the conceptualization of cyberspace. So now we are struggling to apply traditional principles to it. It is troublesome for courts to dispense justice when it comes to the international arena where there are no borders. Let me give an example. Let's say I am running a small online business. I have a website where I can sell my things, a social media account for marketing, and lastly, a payment account so that I can accept money. If my online business is attacked by someone who lives in another country, what do I do? Who do I contact to seek justice for myself and my company? The first thing I should do, according to this article on the Chamber of Commerce website, is to follow a plan that I have already established in the case of this incident. incident. This is called an incident response plan. Naturally, the plan of action will depend on the nature of the attack. I'm going to quarantine my infected systems so that none of the viruses spread. I'm going to alert my employees. I'm going to try to preserve the good data and remove the bad data and restore any data that is lost. Of course, make sure to prevent uh, digital forensic ev evidence and other data about the breach. After securing everything, all my systems and all my data, I need to make sure I'm following all the proper legal processes. Here in the US, if I have been handling medical data and the breach affected more than 500 health records, then I need to notify the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, within 10 days by the law. It is considered good practice to disclose this information to my customers as soon as possible. Since I live in the United States, I'm going to seek help from one of our federal agencies. The CISA, stands for Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, allows you to contact them and report your incident and seek help if they are available. If I go to their website, I can see this big red button in the corner, and I can also follow their advice described on their page. If I have cyber insurance, I should go to my insurance company for a reimbursement. In an instant where we cannot locate the hacker, they cannot be charged for their crime, so I need to get money somehow. Prosecuting is also an expensive process. In summary, this is my general plan for what I'm going to do if my small business is hacked. Respond to the incident, alert my employees, notify my customers, and contact a federal agency, as well as my insurance company. Larger organizations like Amazon or Google may have more complex processes, but in my case, I will just do this. To prevent some cases and help safeguard against jurisdictional issues, I can set up a firewall policy to block traffic from other countries. If I'm only doing business in the United States, then I don't really need to see the traffic from Russia or China. I can set up my network to reject these IP addresses from this area. Unfortunately, this isn't foolproof since hackers can run their software from rented servers in the United States, but it does help a little. When it comes to understanding the legal processes behind this, there are two concepts to keep in mind. Global Internet Jurisdiction and Long Arm Statute. The concept of Global Internet Jurisdiction means determining which country's laws apply in what cases. Those cases involving online activities and disputes that cross international borders. It involves so solving challenges such as jurisdictional reach, content regulation, privacy and data protection, cybercrime and law enforcement, and intellectual property. Jurisdictional reach means when an internet-related uh, issue arises, uh, which country's courts have legal authority to handle the case. This question becomes more complicated when the involved parties and data are distributed across multiple countries. Content regulation means different countries have varying laws and cultural norms regarding what content is acceptable or illegal. Determining the appropriate rules for online content that can be accessed globally can be challenging. 
privacy and data protection refers to the internet companies that often collect and store user data across different jurisdictions. This raises questions about how personal information is protected and who can access it under different legal systems. Cybercrime, law enforcement, uh, when an online crime occurs, such as hacking or an online fraud or cyber, cyber bullying, cooperation among the multiple countries' law enforcement agencies becomes necessary to investigate and to prosecute offenders. And lastly, intellectual property. Um, the online platform facilitates the distribution of content, raising concerns about copyright infringement and enforcement of intellectual property rights across borders. To address these challenges, different countries establish agreements and treaties for coordinating and harmonizing internet laws across nations. However, achieving a unified global standard for internet jurisdiction remain, remains a complex and ongoing task. Right now in our history, uh, the United States, Russia do not get along very well, so there could be some conflicts that you cannot really solve across these two jurisdictions. Long-arm statutes are laws enacted by indi individual states or countries that extend the reach of their court's jurisdictional. They extend the reach of their court's jurisdiction beyond their borders. The term long arm comes from the idea that these laws have a metaphorical long arm that can reach out and assert jurisdiction over parties located outside a state or a country. These statutes enable a court to exercise authority over out-of-state or foreign entities based on certain criteria, something that is critical for the function of jurisdiction in cyberspace. The, speci the specific criteria and scope of these varies depending on the jurisdiction, but they generally require that the non-resident defendant has sufficient minimum contacts with the jurisdiction in question. Common scenarios that may trigger the application of a long-arm statute include conducting business in the jurisdiction, owning property inside the jurisdiction, uh, contractual relationships, internet activities, broadly defined, and committing torts. Um, a tort is if a defendant causes harm or injury to someone within the jurisdiction, they may be subject to the jurisdiction's courts, regardless of where the defendant resides. All in all, long-arm statutes have helped promote fairness and compliance with the law, even in cross-border situations. Because of the complex nature of the internet and the global reach of online businesses, jurisdictional considerations are critical for ensuring legal compliance and avoiding pot potential legal issues. Online businesses often need to work with legal experts who understand the nuances of international law and can navigate the complex, borderless, multi-jurisdictional internet. Thanks for listening. That is the end of this video. In the next one, I'll be discussing a variety of topics, including the roles of a few different United States government agencies in protecting against certain kinds of harmful internet practices and the concept of net neutrality.